three down, the other side, double, and again. It's amazing when you do this a couple of times how it feels so much better than the first time round. And then with the calf raise, one, two, both together, try and keep them shoulders back. And again, one, two, and both back. So easy to get that forward shoulder posture. And again, and back. Well done. And then just one at a time into that short lever for two, for three, for four. Big lever if you can. If not, just keep it into that short lever. And for two, and three, and four. Well done. The other side. And your calves are probably aching a little bit if you're not used to calf raises. And three, and four, and then over for four, for three, good work, two, and one. We've got ten more. If you want to do your calf raise, you can. If not, just do the more wise. So try not to kind of do this. Try and really, I know if you've ever had frozen shoulder, this position's really tough. And we just take it up for ten, for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Well done. Let's just take a little calf for a uh, calf stretch. So bend the front knee, take the back leg long and heel away and then drive the heel down to the floor. If you're really tight with the calves, it's quite nice to do this against a wall and get a little bit of a push. So sometimes with the um, medication, a lot of the time you get that really, oh, just like that tightening of the calf and sometimes the cramping in the night. So just stretch the calf muscle out, pushing down really firmly into that heel. And switch again. So again, push down, feel that deep stretch. I did a hit class last night, so this is, oh, <laughs> Very, very nice. And Carl, sorry I've got my bum to you guys. Just push and release. Well done. Okay, let's dip into them squats. So keep the shoulders down and think again about them hips first of all, almost like you're falling backwards. Take it down. Because we've worked through the shoulders, don't do this one today because it can close the pec wall up a bit. So just keep the shoulders down. And again. Morning, Dibs! <laughs> and excellent. And ten. Yeah, that view did look nice, didn't it, when Angela have, having breakfast overlooking the sea, I think it was. And again. And six. For five. For four. For three. For two. And for one. Well done, let's just do, we're just going to do 10 lunges, that's all. I just want to just watch for a second, only because I've been teaching lunges for a long time and uh, one of the ladies that I was assessing the other day, she was finding them really tough and when I really looked close, she was keeping that back leg straight, so she was doing this. So that's going to put too much pressure on the knee. So keep the shoulder down, back leg nice and long, weight slightly forward, bend both knees at a right angle. And again, two, three, four, five, five more, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. Push the back heel down again. Oh, I used to teach this. She's a friend now. I used to teach a lovely, lovely, lovely girl and got a kind of... She wanted to lose weight, get fit for a wedding, she looked fat, blah, blah. Anyway, she had a little baby girl who was 15 months and we're trying mum and baby together yesterday. She came for a first one-to-one. -one. The baby was not happy. And then the other side, she was like crying, Jenny, until she saw Mace and then she was all blooming smiles. Keep the shoulders down. She offered to prefer his handsome face to mine. And three... And four, five, five more, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. And 
again, push that heel down to the floor. Just hold. Good work. Well done. Let's come back up. Let's just do a little bit of isolated work. So I've got a really itchy nose this morning. I don't know why. So we're just going to keep those shoulders down. We won't work through the calves because we just have done them. Just take your hands out to abduction. Turn the palms up. Bring them over. Back and down. Then take them into front raise. Retract. Out and down. And again. So these movements, hopefully, if you keep doing them, you're just at less risk of developing things like frozen shoulder and out and down. And then again, up, palms up, over, back. Sometimes it's nice to do them with calf raise, and other times it's nice just to do concentrate on your arm. Retract, back and down. And again, up, <laughs> and down, and then forward. Retract out so you feel that stretch in the front of the chest. Down and then up, over. Good. Two more. Forward, front raise. Retract out, down. Last one. And good. And down. Beautiful. Okie dokie. Yeah, we should be alright to pick up some weights now. We've kind of loosened the arms a little bit. So let's do one arm at a time. Always, so Shireen, just anyone who's kind of been through breast cancer surgery, always, try, when you're doing weights and range of motion, always do with your non-surgical arm first so you know you've got a rough guide of what you normally can move and lift. So my weak side is my left. So I'm going to do it with my right because I just told you to do something and I did the opposite. So my strong side is my right, so that's usually, not always, but usually your non-surgical side. So just gently down and then just lift and lower. If balance is an issue, grab hold of something. Yeah, this is going to drive me mad, this itchy you nose. Know. And again, so try and control the weight. If you haven't got a weight, just imagine that you have and kind of use your own body. A little bit harder to do with a bicep or pick a tin of chickpeas up or something. And four. Do you know I've really got into beetroot lately? I know that's a bit of a random thing to say, guys, but Tesco, Jen, I don't know if you like beetroot. They do on the, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, smoky and fiery, I think. Little ones. Gorgeous. Anyway, they're good for your beets. And two. And one. Apart from the minute, you wee red Debs. <laughs> we and Debs were talking, Debs were talking about when she drinks Barocca and if she drinks like an orange Barocca or a wee's orange or purple. And I'm a wealth of information, aren't I? And again, and for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. Switch hands again. Abduction, particularly like I say if you've got a frozen shoulder or you've had it in the past, can be really tough. So you want to keep strong in it, but if you're really struggling getting your arm up to shoulder height, you best just do the motion without the weight to, until you get that full range of motion. And again, let's go four more. For four, for three, for two, for one, if you can lift the leg as well, you can. For eight, if the balance is there. Seven, six, so I've ducked in the leg. And you'll see when you do this, how the shoulder and the hip are the same joint. Yeah, ball and socket joint. So they can do an awful lot. Two and one, which is why we try and need to keep it strong at the, you know, supporting muscles around the joint. And then the other side, eight, for seven, there's six, so try and control it on the way down as much as on the way up. Four more, four, three, two, and one. Leg as well, you might have already been lifting your leg. Eight, keep that core tight, try and keep the hips super still. Three, four, four more, four, three, two, and one. Well 
well done. Not easy then once. And then just gently down to pick your other weight up. And we'll just do a little bit of done waiter. So you just take your heels together and almost like zip up. Yeah, so use the inner thighs a little bit. Bring the weights together, glue the elbows into the waist and try not to let the elbows come away into that external and then in. And again, keep the rib cage down. Don't let the ribs start doing this. Yeah. And again. And for eight. For seven. For six. Good work. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Well done. And last tricep so watch you try watch the tricep one first if you're not used to it i'm just going to put that one down so you don't want the shoulder to hike up like this so keep the shoulder blade down but lift your arm as high as you can and then you just gently bend at the elbow and straighten the arm and again for two and in for three and in four five Do that again. 
Then take the hips back and weight forward, just see if you can get a little bit further, but don't force it. Yeah, so you want to stretch the hamstrings, but you don't want to force it down. Take a breath in. Last one, breath in. Soften in the front knee and just gently up, articulating that vertebra bone by bone. Beautiful, well done. And then take the foot in the other direction. And again, let's just take, hang on a minute guys, sorry, there's something. Yeah, it's fine. Do you know school run yesterday to tell me Finley wasn't well? I didn't, at half past 11. And I didn't get the message till we were home, eating fine, till half past five, but I do feel like a little bit of a bad parent. And then just pull it in, take a breath in. So yeah, you should, this one, you're feeling it right there. Oh, you should bend, hold, feel that stretch. And then into triceps, so take your arm up, and then the palm comes into the middle of the scapula, and then you just push the elbow down. Beautiful. Just take a couple of little circles and then reach that arm up, reach, reach long, and then take it over into that beautiful side bend. Take a breath in. You should feel just this all this lateral part of the body, like kind of like through the lap dorsi muscles, and then gently back. And again, just have a bit of softness in that front knee. Take the hips right back and then gently float forwards. Yeah, so just you should feel this through the back of the back leg, so through the hamstrings, particularly. And some people, it is the um, runner stretch, so it gets into that iliotibial band that goes down the side of the leg and gently back in, which can be incredibly painful if it gets too tight. And then gently up. And then one more. So chin to chest, hips backwards, weight comes forwards. And you just gently down. And again at the bottom, take a beautiful breath in and out and in and out. Last one, breath in, soften the front knee and gently articulate back up, bone by bone. Ah, oh, beautiful. Okay, grab hold of, you know, if your balance is not great, guys, just make sure you have got a wall or a chair or something. We're just going to do, just because I always, just taking time, just because I love tree pose. So these leggings are very, very slippy. So if you struggle a bit with getting the leg up to, you know, up to the inner thigh, you can always do that modified version of tree pose where you put the foot on to the inner calf. And also if you've got very slippy slider leggings on. And then hold, just hold today. Push that big toe into the mat. So really supporting, the supporting leg is working really hard. Really good for bone density. Take it up. Exhale. You can see my foot moving. It's funny how some leggings are just cold and others are dark. Whoop, it's coming down. And again. Big inhale through the nose. Out. I've started doing this hip class. I'm teaching this hip class on a Thursday night. And my legs are a bit oh, tired. Two. That's my excuse. And one. Well done. Good work. The leg you stood on, just take it to the front. Push the heel into the mat. Take the hips back and just gently start coming down and you'll start feeling quite a deep stretch through the hammers and also through the calf as well. Just hold the hands on the shin, take a beautiful breath in. Oh, it rang that, didn't it? And gently back. 
gorgeous. Well done. And then switch sides. So again, the foot comes into the inner. Foot comes into the inner. I think it's because my leggings are wrapped around my heel as well. And then just hold. Draw the belly in. That's why you need the thing, just in case you start wobbling. And take it up. Inhale. Exhale, center. And again. And again. And again. Four more. For three. Debs, I know when you don't go ski, when you go skiing home with Raph and I, you don't ski. But honestly, after all this Pilates, you'll be like running down around flat roads next year. <laughs> Two. Debs is like, no thanks, Joe. I'm quite happy working and in the spa. And well done, beautiful. The leg you've been working on again, or stood on, sorry. Just take the heel into the floor, hips backwards, gently float down. Notice if there's less tension through this leg than there was in the other one. Take a breath in. We're all generally a little bit longer in one leg than the other because we've put a lot of pressure on one side of the body. So just always, you know, have that indication if you're a little bit tight through one side and just gently back up. And beautiful, well done guys, we're going to get down to the floor but we're just going to do three pelvic circles in one direction and three pelvic circles in the other, two and one, well done, brilliant, okay let's just, we've done a couple of roll downs so we can just get gently down onto the floor. So what I want you to do today is we're just going to go straight into bridge. So we're just going to do four bridges just for mobilising through the back. And then we'll do a little bit of abdominal work. So I'll give you, as I always do when I do roll-up, guys, I'll give you an option if roll-up is your nemesis. Yeah. So sometimes people just, yeah, find roll-up very hard. So with a bridge, you don't want your legs out here somewhere. You want them in, so the shins are directly underneath the knees. And you want to think about the shoulders. So often, shoulders can hike a bit like that inwards. And then you get the shortening of the pectoral wall, which can affect breath. So try and really open up the chest. I've got quite broad shoulders, so for me, I'm, I'm okay with this position. But if you really feel like your shoulders are hiking in still, turn the palms up to the ceiling, and that helps open up the chest muscles. And then you should be in neutral spine, pubic bone, hip bones level. Little gap underneath the lower lumbar spine. So just take a nice breath in through the nose. And then imagine a tray of drinks on the front of the tummy. We want to spill into the belly button as we take the lower back into the mat. And then slowly start lifting our bum, lifting our lower back our mid back and we send our knees nice and long so we're only on the shoulder blades we're not up here somewhere on the neck we're just on the shoulder blades the hips are nice and level and you've got what i call i always think of like a ski slope yeah so you want to keep them hips nice and level and just hold for a bit of endurance through the back through the hamstrings and through the thighs as well and then take a beautiful breath in at the top and slowly lower, bone by bone. So a guy once asked me what the benefits, he just said, what, what is bridge all about? What, what do we do it for? And I think he wished he'd never asked. So take a breath in, gently roll into imprint. So as we're coming up, we're obviously strengthening the whole of the posterior chain. Yeah, so the bum, the hamstrings, and obviously the back, and getting that joint movement as well. So up in here, take a breath in. And again, slowly down. And it really helps. 
else you think about pelvic alignment as well. And again, breath in through the nose. Gently roll the lower back into the mat. Start lifting. And just make sure when you're in this position that the ribs are kind of flaring like that. Yeah, you want the ribs together. So again, just hold that position. Hold. And all we're going to do is raise the right heel, keep the ball of the foot on the floor and lower it. Raise the left heel. And what should happen is the hip doesn't feel like it's dropping when you do it. So it needs quite a bit of strength. And again, just alternate for four, for three, for two, and for one. Take a breath in. Slowly lower. Boom, bye, boom. And back to neutral. And on the last one, we're going to progress it. If when you raise the heel, you felt the opposite hip bone drop, don't do this next one. You're not ready for it. But if you want to give yourself a challenge, we take a breath in. Again, gently roll the lower back into the mat. And don't think, oh, I can't do it. Honestly, it is... Try this with your other half, your girlfriends, your boyfriends, your sons, and you'd be surprised how few people actually can do this without this happening. So just tuck the tailbone, draw the belly in, and really squeeze the glutes for this one if you're going to try this one. Push the right foot in, lift the left leg into tabletop. Nice, stable position. And slowly drop it. Push that foot down. Bring the other side and drop. Slowly push that foot in, lift the other leg into tabletop and down. Push in and lift and down. Take a beautiful breath in through the nose. And slowly lower. Boom, bye, boom. Gorgeous. Well done. Just take the ankles together and just squeeze the knees into chest. You can have a little roll around if you want. Cost of energy, guys, my um, and petrol. My tip of the day is if you don't need to take your car, have a nice walk, it's cheaper. And did you see that thing going around Facebook? Someone was hugging a guy and said, Oh, it smells expensive. And someone said, Yeah, it smells of petrol. Okay, on to your side, guys. Let's do a little bit of side leg. I know some of you love this so much, and some of you are like, Oh, okay, so. I'm just going to be... <laughs> Your phone's ringing. Say again, babe. I think the doorbell's ringing. I might need to go. All right, babe. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm only joking. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I should know you by now. I thought you know me. It's not me, Joe. I think I've just... I've got an urge for a Kit Kat and a cup of tea. <laughs> the thing is, Deb, your doorbell on your phone does always ring, babe, doesn't it, So, So... <laughs> it's together, knees together, ankles together, or together. I said it really weird. Then. Or if you want, that's the original position. If you feel a little bit unsteady, or you're just feeling like you want a bit more comfort, I'm just going to take the easier option today. I'm going to bend that bottom knee. This top's a bit baggy, but feel that gap and try and maintain it. And we're going to lift. We're going to start with the circles today because they are the hardest, I think. And we're going to circle for six. Circle for five, circle for four. You would think if you did these daily, it would get easier, but they never do. Until you have a new client and then go back and they do about five and they're like, oh, then you realise how strong that is. And again, let's do three more. Three, two, and one. Hold it and then point that foot, really point it. Take it forward, one, two, and then fully flex it and bring it back. Point, one, two, flex, and back. 
and again. Point, one, two, flex, and back. I've probably told you this already, guys, but if you want a little bit of escapism, um, you almost feel guilty having escapism at the minute. Well, I do. But if you want to just watch something nice on TV and you like food, um, which who doesn't like food? Watch uh, BBC One, I think it's BBC One, Stanley Tucci um, is, re is discovering Italy. Point, one, two, and it's really good. Hold, and then, and I love him as well. But he's got, he's the coast to Rome, one week, Sicily, Naples, Bologna, uh, la, 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 la. Florence, did I say Tuscany? Anyway, six places, very, very good. And two, and one, and hold. If you're on a diet, don't believe in diets, but if you're on a diet, maybe it's not a good thing to watch. And just pull in. The Tuscany one's lovely. I said, um, he lived in Florence for a year when he was 12, and he brings his, his mum and dad go with him to Florence for a bit, and it's, yeah, really quite touching. And then just let's take it into class. I always have to talk to you when I'm doing side leg to put you, take your mind off it. <laughs> so bring that bottom shin away, keep the hips facing forward, open and close, nice and slowly. Open and close. Open. So I find clam much easier than side leg, but uh, yeah, some people find clam pretty tough. Four. So nice when the sun's out. One. And then we're going to open, we're going to kick that leg. We're going to bring it in. Nice control. There should be no shifting in the hips. And for two, if you feel a bit unbalanced, not psychologically like you know, you're going to tip over, then um just put the hand in front of the navel. And again, let's go for four. Good. Close. Three, <clears throat> two, one, and then just four without uh, without doing the kick. Four, three, two, and hold it. Little pulse. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well done, beautiful. Come on to your back. Let's do the nice bit now. So a piriformis stretch. I know I harp on about this all the time, but everyone's like when they do piriformis, oh! So leg into tabletop. Think about the inner knee and you want to push in the direction of the opposite inner shoulder. So you just literally push it in towards the midline. Hold that. Sometimes people feel that enough. Or I like to lift up. And with the opposite hand, I grab my ankle bone. Now what can sometimes happen then is the leg goes out. So keep pushing on that inner, sorry, that outer knee. Yeah, so you always think about pushing that way. And then just hold. I said we were doing roll up first, didn't I? But anyway, I think not. And then take the hand that's at the outer knee out to shoulder height, the hand that's on the ankle bone, take it to the outer thigh and just come into that supine spine. You might only want to go to there or you might want to go all the way down, but go easy. It's a beautiful stretch where it is quite intense for some people through the lower back. Take a nice breath in, let the belly rise. Exhale, release. And again. Last one. And then just come back in and just bring that knee into chest. Have a really nice stretch of that lower back. And we're just going to, I think, Actually, we're not going to roll up. We're going to do some, um, well, I'm going to give you a choice. Okay, because I'm fine. Right, so we're either going to do, so some people love roll-ups. I do, if I'm honest, but some people just 
They don't. So to isolate the tummy muscles, we'll all start this exercise together and then you can join me and roll up if you want or continue. So one leg comes into tabletop, the other one does. Sometimes if you're really struggling, men, I shouldn't really be gender specific, but I'm not saying anything I haven't said to the guys. Guys seem to struggle a bit more than women with single leg stretch, with keeping their abdominals and their ribcage closed. They tend to do this and really push out. So just be careful. If you feel that you can't keep the ribcage closed and on the mat, just go into one at a time and get really used to doing an exercise in neutral with one leg, maybe 10 on one side, 10 on the other. Or if you're happy, you can come into single leg stretch. The lower you take the leg, obviously the harder the abdominals have to work to stop the belly from doming and the pubic bone from moving forward. And four. should just close your eyes just think about that lower back yeah that little gap underneath the lumbar lower spine before you get to your bottom and just imagine that running water can just gently flow and you're not stopping you're not increasing or decreasing the flow of water as you take the legs in and out so keeping in neutral all the time with the back and just rest now this can get into the hip flexors, so you might just want to take a little butterfly stretch and a few breaths in and out. So for round two, continue with that, or you can do roll up with me. I'm just going to tuck this in, guys, otherwise my top will be around my roof somewhere. So, if you're doing a roll up, just let your arms come backwards and just have a little think what happens with the ribs. Yeah, I say this a lot, but with me, if I don't think about it, my ribs automatically start to come up and out, and that back then... That back then goes out of alignment. So, nothing wrong with that as long as you recruit when you start coming up. So you take a breath in through the nose. Chin towards the chest. Lift the upper back away. The ribs close in towards the hips. So it's a shorter, yeah, they're shorter. And then you come forward and restack back up as though you're restacking against a wall. Draw the belly in again and a nice C curve. Take a breath in, chin towards the chest, out breath. Sometimes, as Jenny and Deb know, sometimes roll up can feel quite seamless, and other times it can feel like, oh my god, it's the hardest thing in the world. It's nice to do bridge before, so if you do struggle with roll up. Give yourself, just try and kind of practice, do your own practice and just think, right, I'm going to do four or five cat to cows and then I'm going to do four bridges. So the back is nice and mobilised before you start. Yeah, don't try and do it first thing on the morning without having mobilised the spine first. And again, out breath. If you're doing single leg, give yourself a little break. Yeah, after about 12. For the last four, if you want to try a single leg, you send the ribs down, lower the back, lift one leg, slowly back. Much more advanced, single leg teaser. Gently down. You must make sure the ribs are down, the lower back before you raise the leg. And... And gently relax. Take your arms out to capital T. And then just glue the legs together. Take the knees to the right, the head to the left. Oh, lovely stretch. Inhale, let the belly rise. Exhale, draw the belly in. And then 
back to centre. Sorry guys, I'm laughing because uh, I tried. It looked so easy, this Italian. I think it's when you were in Sicily. They were showing, apparently the Sicilians had, were, there, were obviously there in Cor at one point. So they used to do a lot of their sauces and dishes without meat. So I started following this recipe yesterday. I cut my celery up really small and my carrots and my onions and tomato. And the boys came home and Finn walked in. It was all simmering in the pan with garlic. And he went, oh, what's that? It looks horrible. <laughs> so I ended up blending the sauce. It was absolutely delicious, they said. But yeah, I couldn't get him to eat like loads of chunks of vegetables bloody hell and then back to centre and then come over onto your other side you think they were like two or something they're like 21 17 and 50. oh you know when you used to be little and they're like oh you have to mush your vegetables up for your babies all right then keep that bottom leg lift uh, sorry bottom waist lifted guys again if you want to do your um original one you can just make sure you're not rocking i'll do the original one on this side so keep that waist lifted, don't drop the waist. So if you lift the leg too high, the waist might drop. So think about length. So we're gonna do the circle first. Circle for six, circle for five, circle for four, for three, for two, for one. Circle back the other way. Six, five, four, three, two, and one, and then really soften that knee to keep that stability as you keep the leg forward. So point the foot, one, two, flex back. So we're not swinging the hips like this, yeah? We're really keeping the hips level. One, two, bring it back. Point, one, two, bring it back. And again, point, one, two, bring it back. Four more, point, one, two, bring it back, point, one, two, bring it back, and again, two more, one, two, back, last one, point, one, two, and then some little pulses, so really lengthen for 12, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, and one, well done, good work, grab the heel. Uh, sorry, the foot, bring the heel into the bottom. I want to jump on our roller for five minutes, guys, once I've stretched the uh, glutes out. Um, if you haven't got your roller, just because, Jen, I know you love it. Well, I know a lot of people like the uh, shoulder work, and it's important anyway after surgery. So we're just going to take them legs again into climb. You can come up onto your elbow or just make a little pillow, whatever feels comfortable. And then just eight and close. Press seven and close. Six, close. Five, four, three, two, one, and then open for eight and close. Four, seven and close. Four, six and close. Five. Good work. Four, three, two, one, four more, four just close, three, close, two, put up on it and then just push it out a little, one, just a tiny little pulse, two, three, four, four, three, two and one well done lots of power the glute max is the big i think it's either that or the satoris but i think it's the biggest muscle in the human body or certainly if it's not the biggest the second so push that knee away and then just keep pushing we'll do this one sorry first then i'll do piriformis so just push that knee out so a figure four stretch it's the one that if you forget how to do piriformis it's kind of the next best Thing really, and you're more likely to remember it. Beautiful. So, see if you can get yourself into piriformis. <laughs> I'll give you a couple of seconds and then. 
see if you've done it right. So you lengthen the leg, and the, the leg that you want to stretch out, it comes into tabletop, stay in hand, push the inner knee towards the inner opposite shoulder. Lift up, opposite hand comes to the outside ankle bone, and you just pull the heel, but the most important thing is you're pushing on the outside knee. Take a lovely breath in. I did this in class last night and Raf was saying, um, I don't think so, but there is no spaceship. Raf was saying that our one side was much tighter than the other. So the piriformis muscle in the butt is very, really quite close to the sacroiliac joint. So if you've got a bit of pain down one side of your back, sometimes you may find that this muscle is possibly what's causing it. And that little bit of sciatic pain. And then take that hand away opposite hand and just gently come on over take a beautiful breath in let the belly rise and begin two more And just before we jump on our roller or keep on the floor, you can always do your shoulder work on the floor. It still feels really nice. You just don't get quite as much feedback from the floor as you do on the roller. So either keep on the floor in this position or, um, yeah, when I say jump on the roller, it's not quite that easy for some people to get on. When you're on the roller, always make sure that the bottom, easy for me to say, five foot two, in a little bit, um, but you want your bum on it and you want your head on it, yeah? So, uh, yeah, that's the important thing. Never let the head fall backwards because obviously the neck will start to shorten there. So a little chin nod. So if you're on the mat, you'll be just in the same position as me, nice neutral spine, and we're just going to take right ear to right shoulder and back the other way. Left ear, left shoulder. And then back. Right ear, right shoulder. And back. Left ear, left shoulder. And back. And again, three more. And just notice if there's much tension in the neck area. Last one, take a big breath in before you move. Back to centre. Over, inhale. And then back. And then just take your right arm up and just protract the shoulder blade either away from the roller or away from the mat and then retract it back down. Protract it and retract it. Protract. Retract, protract, retract, and gently down. Do the other side, protract, retract. Keeping all the muscles going around that scapular area, there's a lot, an awful lot around the pen trapped, the rotator cuff muscles as well. And then just bring both of them to me, uh, sorry, both of them up to the ceiling. So again, keep the rib cage closed if you can. Try and maintain the rib cage closure on the mat or the roller. And we're just going to go into that scissor. And again, just notice, is there more movement through one side? Is the thumb touching the floor? If not, how far away is it? And then on the next one, just go as far as kind of like the I suppose like the eye line, the ears, something like that, and then do the certain action. This is the one that, yeah, can be a little bit problematic, um, especially first few months after breast cancer surgery. That abduction always seems to cause a little bit of an issue. And again, but whatever movement you can do, do. Just because you can't get full range, don't stop moving it. That's when the fascia will get even thicker and get harder to break that inflammation down. And again, one more each side. Oh, that's good. And 
and beautiful it is but it's just come back off your roll it's almost not worth getting on is it we're not going to do a single leg on the roller and then just stick your bum right up take a beautiful breath in and then leave your head where it is and start articulating bone by bone one at a time as we take the chin to chest keep the chin where it is and start going back the other way